Smell, what's that feeling? Uh, it's still the answer that eludes us. Uh, Professor LeBlanc, uh, what is the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Well, I bet you're expecting me to say one will see you later and one will see you in a little while. <laughs> for a living and you might have seen them had you been up at two or three o'clock in the morning and episode number 523 <clears throat> talks about this difference and it's very without giving anything away it has nothing to do with time <laughs> all right so obviously the answer is to stay up until three in the morning making bad life choices and watch the infomercial uh, Coach William, what's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Well, I know no gators can play some damn, can't play any damn defense. That's why I know. <laughs> us Oklahoma City, us Oklahoma City Hornets, we can play the best defense in the state. And those gators, whenever we go up against them, we know that we can play so much better on offense with that air raid that we run all the time. And I know when I see those bodies out there going out there, I know that's the best damn football team I'm going to watch. Like these five state championship rings that I have, that I can prove that I can be able to know the best in this biology. Thank you, Coach Williams. Yes. I, I like how you wear all five rings on just that one finger. I forgot my 11 back home. Uh, so gators can't play defense, and alligators are good with a spread offense. God, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, and then finally, of course. <laughs> Zelda, the whaler from way back. Thanks for asking. I think, you know, since you know I'm a transplant from Louisiana, I know a thing or two about alligators and uh, crocodiles. And uh, I think the difference is not that they're a sports team, because they're actually an animal. <laughs> <laughs> alligators are, uh, well, they're, well, they're bigger than the crocodiles. And, uh, see, I, I keep an alligator as a pet at home. I named it uh, Sam, as a matter of fact. And, uh, <clears throat> and crocodiles, uh, you, you just you just have to be real careful when you go to the amusement park. You, you just never know when one's going to sneak up. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, obviously crocodiles are uh, unscrupulous carnies. Yeah. Uh, watch out anytime you're at a carnival, they will pickpocket you. Thank you so much. I have a weird feeling that the best advice came from the whaler. All right. <laughs> uh, another question from the audience. Any question about biology? Someone's already inhaling breath into their body and putting up. Yes, yes. Can you suck the venom out of a snake bite? Uh, yes, uh, that's Charles. He and I've been dating. This is a thing that he is just uh, uh, harping on me over and over about. But we will go ahead and answer the question: uh, Can you suck the venom out of a snake bite, uh, Professor Laplante? Well, for starters, I'd be careful kissing that snake. <laughs> <laughs> Take someone else's finger here. Let me know. <laughs> and then just put those little fangs on there, and then they'll just they'll just drip eventually. That's the safe way to do. It. Well, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, Professor Laplanche is saying practice safe snaking, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, always use uh, 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 the buddy system, or at least the buddy finger system. Uh, yes, uh, Coach Williams. Uh, is it possible to suck the poison out of a snake bite? Well, I don't know why you would want to. I'm, I'm an old school coach. And so we talk about steroids nowadays. Back in the day, we used snake venom to help us in the weight room. We would inject our guys with snake venom, and they would be, one guy was bench pressing 200 pounds, now he's bench pressing 400 pounds. Look, I am someone who's old school. I don't think you need to get rid of that snake venom. I think it would be very helpful for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Apparently, from Coach Williams, it's like the question really is: Can you spit more venom into a snake bite and get that extra oomph to your players? Also, don't put lips on your players. All right. Uh, 
This is a very serious question. Oh, thank you. About the snake bite. Because a snake bite can kill you, and I don't think that keeping the venom inside your body is gonna be a good thing for you. And uh, so I carry a uh, snake bite kit. It's like a first aid kit. You open it up, there's a little knife in there. You can cut that little venom out of your arm, and uh, then you can just and you just suck it out of there, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, then you feel, then you should feel better after a week or two in the hospital. That's <laughs> that's my advice. You should use a knife and then suck it out. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it seems like Zelda the Whaler really bringing hard facts. <laughs> List right. of questions. That's right. Uh, and then finally, our last question is always one of the big questions. Uh, uh, it could be about love, life, anything like that. Just make it one of the uh, big life questions. Yes, you, sir. What are the medicinal benefits of freeze-dried donkey milk? Yes, one of the big life questions. <laughs> the medicinal properties of freeze-dried uh, donkey milk. Or, just to broaden it a little bit, are we what we eat? <laughs> Now the three of them are totally 
different people, they're all part of a team, a team that works together like the Justice League, but not the Justice League, because we can't afford those rights. <laughs> Mathletes, mathematician team, you know, one of those high power action pack mathletes, mathematician teams. And then I'll say freeze again, and finally Sean Winter. And here they're at, uh, they're at a, an event, a big life event. What's the big giant life event? Retirement party. Retirement party. I heard timer party at first, and I was like, it's some sort of sex thing. <laughs> Everybody gets time. <laughs> Retirement party makes more sense, and that's what we'll, uh, we'll review real quick. Retirement party, seen out. Mathletes. Mathletes, seen out. Iceberg. Iceberg, seen out. Prince Charming. Okay, so in three, two, one, we'll see Prince Charming. You guys ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, Prince Charming. Two more days till the big ball. All them ladies are gonna be so lucky to see me. <laughs> My lucky hat, making me look very handsome. <laughs> There's going to be so many lucky ladies. I'll bow. Freeze! Seen in iceberg. Look at all this water we can get from this iceberg. We've been sailing these seas for so long, we can finally not drink that seawater anymore. <laughs> What's wrong? I drank the seawater. Oh. <laughs> Let me try some of this ice work. Oh, so, oh, so good. You're, you're having a, a really. I haven't had any good water in so long. You, you, you seem a little dehydrated. Let's maybe dump a little on ya. Oh, oh, so oh yeah, Frankie. <laughs> Let's do some more, Frankie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that seems like mathletes to me. Mathletes. <laughs> See new mathletes. Come on, guys. We can cheer for math. You Oh, I see. We're going to drink 
more water. Yes, we are. Freeze! Prince Charming. So I got 27, 28 rubies here. If I give four to each lady, screw it. I'm going to give them big bags of money. <laughs> I'm just going to pass out. Okay, how am I going to say this? Here's your money, and here's your money. Oh, shoot, nobody's going to want my money. <laughs> I'm just a stupid old prince with a bunch of money, and nobody's, nobody's ever going to love me. Oh, I guess see, because it's so sad. <laughs> He's always in the scene when you break a beloved Disney character. <laughs> an existential crisis. Are you guys ready for the last game? Yeah. The last game is going to be genre director. In this game, uh, Alex and uh, uh, Connie and Sean will be performing a pivotal scene of a movie. Like this is going to be the big moment of the movie. And then uh, the studio will get involved and we'll switch things around. So to get us started, we need uh, just a couple of genres. What's a genre of film? Like film noir, but not film noir because we can't smoke on stage. Thriller. 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 So whatever that's going to mean to us, the genre of film is thriller. Uh, what is a genre of book? A book, the written word? Fantasy. Fantasy. So the second one will be fantasy. And then finally, a uh, genre of performance art, similar to mine. But interpretive dance. Interpretive dance. <laughs> interpretive dance will be the last one. And then finally, to give us the title of the film, will someone please read out the last text message they feel comfortable reading out in front of a room full of strangers and your family and friends? Where's my dinner? Where's my dinner? I love your guys' relationship. It's fine. If you need anybody to talk to, we have people we can get you to Where's my dinner? So first we'll see the pivotal scene of Where's My Dinner? And that scene will begin in three, two, one. Sally, where's my dinner? I I just killed the calf and, and, and you're just gonna have to wait. I gotta skin it and I gotta gut it and I gotta get it ready so I, that you can eat. Are you know you, what? How I'm hungry just, are you? I'm so hungry I'll just eat it right now. Well, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I think it really needs to be at least medium. Ding dong! Ding dong. Hey, <laughs> hey, <that's laughs> Hello? Grubhub here with <laughs> your steak dinner! Finally! Ooh. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any money for... Yeah, I've got some money. I've got some money. Let me put this I, down real quick. And I'll what's the total? $327. Well, $327 for what? from across town. How far across town? Well, as far as it took. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. I love it. You guys are great. Everything you do is like, I don't know, God's whispering in my ear. <laughs> but the studio can't stand it. They do not like it. Uh, uh, they, they don't like the, the power dynamic. In today's society, the Me Too movement, we can't have the husband yelling about the dinner. So what we're doing first, we're switching your roles. So you are angry about dinner, and you are killing animals. <clears throat> but now they want it to be a thriller. They want there to be a thing. So maybe you made some food? Maybe you use some poison? Maybe you are someone delivering food? Maybe you're someone coming to kill people? <laughs> also, I'm sorry the doorbell didn't work the first time. I have uh, the crew on it. Also, they built a door. So feel free to use the door as part of the set. It's right behind you. <laughs> so if you want to use it. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, what's for dinner? The thriller version! Action! <laughs> Where's my dinner? It's coming, dear. <laughs> it's a good man. <laughs> I tripped you up right. When we were standing in front of that preacher and he said, Do you promise to get her whatever she wants when she wants it? And you said, Yes, dear. Oh, 
<laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> oh. Who's at the door? I don't know. Go see. Oh. Yes, dear. <laughs> Made into corporal form! 
You're wonderful! I love everything you do! The studio's about to fire us. Uh, they're like, uh, we need to do something. We need to make this more artsy. So it's going to be interpretive dance, but I'm going to hedge our bets, and I'm going to use all of our favorite parts from the other ones, too. So you're going to be a dancing gnome, because I love the physics. I love your dance moves with the gnome. You're going to be a dancing wizard. You're going to be a dancing pile of numbers thriller. I don't know if you, but you got it. I got it. All right, and then you guys will have like some sort of a dance off over the price, the haggling. It's going to be great. It's, we're definitely going to not lose our jobs after this one. So back to one. Where's my dinner? Their interpretive dance plus everything else version. And action. Oh, hello, Ned the gnome, my dears. Betrothed, <laughs> what, uh, what have you there in your clawed fingers? <laughs> it's a cow. <laughs> it's a lovely cow. It's, that's what, that, that is what I wanted for dinner. I was just about to ask you. Thank you for being proactive. It's cow just for the beautiful you. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you. Oh, there's the door. Put the cow down, please, Ned, and answer the door. Thank you so much. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Thank you guys so much.